Hi, it's Monica and today let's talk about what's on my September and October TBR. So the thought around this TBR was that I want to bring back more of YA fantasy reads into my life and talking about some books that I have really wanted to read but have not yet read. And I think YA fantasy is perfect for autumn coming up so that was the idea behind this TBR. Quickly before jumping in, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and that will let me know if you are enjoying my videos. And you can also hit subscribe if you want to see more of my bookish content. So starting off with my mug pick, what's in this book is some contemporary or romance books that have been sitting on my shelf for a while and I want to read one of these. And I kind of gave up with Second Chance Summer because I was not interested in making that one up. So I'm just, just going to pick a new one for this TBR. I picked up the way you make me feel out of the mug so i just grabbed it off the shelf and it's the way you make me feel by marie gu so this one is following 16 year old clara shin and she is forced to work into her dad's food truck and that's where she's going to be spending her summer and she's not really happy about that but she might meet someone along the way and just reading some of the blurbs on the back Authors are saying that they really like how this one made them laugh and cry and there's some mentions of really good food so I think this is one I will enjoy. My first pick of this TV bar is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is a YA fantasy that is releasing August 30th and I do have an arc of this one but I still not gotten around to it so I'm putting it on this TBR. And I did mention Belladonna in my most anticipated reads video for the summer and fall months. This book is following 90 year old Signal Faro whose life is on a constant repeat of her losing guardians. Meanwhile, she's also an orphan and she does have some wealth attached to her name. And the only relatives that Signa has are the Hawthorns who live in a gothic estate. And this family is really eccentric and Signa finds out that there are ghosts or there might have been a murder. But she also understands that her relatives might also need her help. And this is one of the key things that drew me in into this book was that Signa makes an ally with death who is a constant shadow that follows her around. So what I'm assuming what will happen in this book is that Signa has made a deal with death and that reminds me of Annie LaRue. So hoping that it will go along those lines when I get to this book. Okay, and my next pick is Kingdom of the Fear by Karen Maniscalco. This is the last and final book in the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. This one, I am really excited to find out what will happen with Amelia and Wrath and also what is up with her twin sister Victoria and I'm just hoping that everything will wrap up nicely and that we also get more romance in this last installment. Next up I chose Cersei by Madeline Miller to be on this TBR. So this is another book that has been sitting on my shelf for a while and I personally love Greek mythology and I've heard people like rave and love about this book even until this day so i really need to get to it so cersei is about the house of helios who is the god of the sun and it is also a titan and cersei is the daughter of helios cersei herself has the power of witchcraft which gets her banished by zeus onto a deserted island and on the island cersei she's like okay whatever she just holds her craft and learns how to be powerful with her magic Meanwhile, she's also encountering mythological figures along the way. But there is a danger that Cersei faces against one of the Olympians. And Cersei's struggle is between choosing if she belongs with the gods or with the mortals. I'm really interested in seeing how this book works out. Since I don't think I've read a Greek mythology fictional book before, so I'm looking forward to it. So next up on my list is Legendborn and Bloodmark by Tracy Dion. These two books are a YA fantasy duology, with Bloodmark being released in November, but I do have a Night Galley arc of this, so I'm really excited to get to this duology. So Legendborn takes place at a university, and we are following Bree Matthews, who is enrolled in a special residential program for really top high school students. But on her first night on campus, she witnesses a magical flying demon demon attack and she figures out that there is a hidden secret society known as the legend board who hunts down these creatures. As it turns out, Brie also has magic and her dead mother has a connection to the legend born secret society. Brie comes to the realization that there was something off with her mother's death and she enlists the help of this guy named Nick who is the self-exiled legend born and they work together to find out what is going on. There's also mentions of King Arthur's Knights, and we also have impending magical wars, so I'm really excited to get to this duology. 
And I did want to toss in something that was not a white fantasy, and I tossed in A Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. So this one is an adult contemporary romance, and we do have elements of a 10-year age gap, a golden retrieve love interest, and the opposites attract trope. So with Abby Jimenez, I really loved her Happy Ever After playlist book, and it made me cry, and I hope this one makes me cry too. In this book, we are following Alexis, who is an ER doctor, and her love interest is a young and hot carpenter, Daniel. So they come from two total opposite worlds, and I'm really interested to see how they get together. This next book is also a second in a duology, and this is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber, and this is following Once Upon a Broken Heart. This duology takes place after the Caraval trilogy, and I do think it is better that you read that before you pick up this, since there are a lot of contexts that you may want to know. With Once Upon a Broken Heart, it was a really strong start to the duology, and we do see a lot of similar elements from Caraval. We get to see the same magic, the extravagant clothing, and also the fates. So I'm really interested to see how Evangeline and Jax will end up in this second book. And after the events of book one, with the really fun twists and turns, like prophecies and fairy tales, I hope we get more of that in book two. So I'm really excited to see how this duology concludes. And the last book is a YA fantasy standalone, and it is A Lessons in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. So this one has witches, a boarding school, and also murder mystery, all elements I love. We're following Felicity Morrow, who is returning back to her boarding school, Dalloway School, after the death of her girlfriend. And this school has a history of murders and also rumors of witchcraft. There's also the arrival of a new first-year student, Alice, who is a prodigy novelist at 17 years old. Felicity feels drawn to Alice and Alice does ask Felicity for help at researching about the school murders and since Felicity does have some sort of connection to that, and she is willing to help and history does have a way of repeating itself and something might be going down in this book. I think this one is perfect to end off this TBR because Halloween is right around the corner and the occult themes in this book is really fitting to that and I'm really looking forward to this one. And those were all the books that I hope to read in September and October. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big huge thumbs up if you would like and also hit that subscribe button down below to see more of my YouTube videos and ring that bell to be notified. I'll see y'all soon.